The next short-term decision is to take a look at what pricing approach we will take. Whenever we are setting a price for our product, there are several things we need to take into consideration. The first thing is, how much profit do we want? What is our target profit? Along with our target profit, we also need to look at how much our customers are willing to pay for our product. If we want $1 million in profit, and you charge your customer one and a half million, will they pay one and a half million for that product? Well, it depends. It depends on what type of product you're selling and there are other considerations. Those considerations are basically whether are we a price taker or a price setter for this particular product. And we'll take a look at what a price taker is and a price setter is. First, let's take a look at price takers. Price takers are companies that have products which lack uniqueness. In the consumer's mind, one product is the same as another competitor's product. For example, if you take um, shampoos, if you go to a grocery store uh, and you look at Pantene and L'Oreal and uh, Garnier, they're all priced around the same uh, price. In a consumer's mind, none of these products are unique. Price takers also have heavy competition and the pricing approach we will use for these type of product is what we call target costing. On the other hand, price setters are what products that are more unique. In, our cons in the consumer's mind, they will be well willing to pay more money for this particular product. For example, sticking to shampoos, um, the brand called Matrix carries a shampoo that is $20 a bottle. Pantene and the others that are there in the grocery stores are about $354 $4 a bottle. So um, the Matrix is a price setter in this market. Price setters face less competition and the pricing approach we're going to use for these type of companies is called cost plus pricing. First, let's take a look at target costing. Remember, target costing is a type of costing used by a price taker. The first step is that we're going to take a look at what our market price is. We cannot sell above the price that is dictated by the market. So let's say, for example, if Pantene wants to come up with a new shampoo, in the consumer's mind, Pantene is not a unique product. All Pantene shampoos are comparable to other competitors shampoos. They have to set their selling price at whatever the market bears, which may be $4. Now, once you know the market price, you have to subtract how much profit you want from that product and that will give you your target cost. If you cannot manufacture your product below or equal to your target cost, you're not going to gain your desired profit. That's what we call target costing. The target cost includes all the elements of your value chain, so all the costs incurred in all the elements of your value chain. There are two potential outcomes when you use target costing. The first outcome is that actual costs are less than target cost, which is great. That means you will make more profit than your target profit. The second outcome is that actual costs are greater than your tar total target cost. In that case, you've got a problem. In this case, you're not going to meet your target profit. So there are several things that companies can do if they're faced with the second situation. The first thing the company can do is to try to increase their sales. They can use CVP analysis, which we discussed in the earlier chapter, to compute target sales that they need to achieve their target profit. A lot of time target profit is stated as a percentage of assets invested in the business. So if you increase your sales uh, volume, you may be able to achieve your target profit. That is one option. The next option is you could try to mix up your product. So increase product mix so that you have some uh, products that have a high contribution margin and then remove items with some low contribution margin. You can try to basically change your cost structure. The main thing that companies can try to do is to make their products unique, differentiate its product somehow so customers are willing to pay a higher price. That would be the most um, beneficial option because then 
they will have a lot more flexibility with their pricing strategies. The second approach of pricing we will look at is cost plus pricing. Remember, cost plus pricing is what's used by the price setters. In cost plus pricing, we start off with our full cost. Basically, it's the opposite approach to our target pricing. You start off with the company's full cost, and then you add the desired profit to figure out how much your selling price would be. So it's total cost plus desired profit will give you your cost plus price. So your decision rule for pricing is that if a company is a price taker, you are going to emphasize target costing. If the company is a price setter, then you're going to emphasize cost plus pricing. Let's take a look at some examples. Be sure to pause the video and read the question and then um, hit play again. Let's take a look at what kind of information they have given us. They've told us that they sell 2,000 kayaks a year, which is their sales volume. And they've told us that this particular company operates in a highly competitive market. Whenever you see that word, that they operate in a highly competitive market, you know that this company is a price taker for their product. In the next line, they do tell you that they use target pricing, but sometimes they won't tell you. But whenever you see highly competitive, you know that they are a price taker. Uh, the selling price of the kayaks is 450 It's not this particular company's selling price, it's the competitor's price. So if the competitors are selling them for 150 Water Sports, being a price taker, cannot sell it for more than 450 because then um, consumers will not buy this product. Next, they said that the company has one million of assets and investors want 18% return on assets. That will be their target profit. How much is the full product cost? That is the question. When we are looking at this, we said to uh, calculate target cost, we're going to start off with revenue at market price. So basically, we start off with whatever revenue that the market will bear, less however much profit we want, and that will give us our target cost. The revenue at our market price is 2,000 kayaks times $450, which is $900,000. Next, we subtract desired profit. Desired profit is based on the $1 million of assets that the shareholders have invested in the business, and they want a return of 18%. So the way we calculate desired profit is 1 million times 18%. That will give you 180,000. We subtract that from our revenues to come up with our target cost, which is $720,000. That is your full target cost, but if you want to calculate your target cost per unit, all you would divide is your 720,000 divided by the number of units of kayaks, which is 2,000, giving you $360 per kayak. You need to be able to produce your kayaks at $360, otherwise you will not meet your desired profit. Let's take a look at another example. Again, be sure to pause the video so you, can, uh, you know what's going on. Let's take a look at what kind of information they have given us. They've told us that um, the investors would like a 10% return on the 40 million assets that the company have. Uh, they also have given you fixed cost of 15 million. They've given you the volume which is 400,000 golfers and the variable cost which is $20 per golfer. They also have told you that this golf course has a favorable reputation in the area and that they have some control over the price. Whenever you see that kind of information you know that this particular company is a price setter. They have favorable reg reputation and have some control of the price, so they are a price setter, in which case we're going to use a cost plus approach. When we're using a cost plus approach, we start off with total cost, we add our desired profit, and then we come up with cost plus price. Remember, our cost plus, or the total cost, is a combination of variable cost plus fixed cost. So let's first look at our variable cost. Variable cost is calculated by multiplying our sales volume of 400,000 golfers by our variable cost per unit of $20 per golfer. 
plus we have to add our fixed costs, which were 15 million. That gives us a total cost of 23 million. Next, we're going to take a look at desired profit. Our desired profit is calculated by multiplying our rate of return of 10% by 40 million in assets, which gives us 4 million. 4 million is our desired profit, and then you add those together and we come up with our cost plus price of $27 million. This $27 million represents um, the total revenue, so how much should we charge per one round of golf? For that, you divide your $27 million by our volume, which is four, uh, 400,000 golfers, and we come up with charging sixty-seven fifty per round of golf. Be sure to review these two questions and know how to calculate your target cost plus cost plus price uh, because both those would be questions that could be uh, tested in your quizzes as well as your exams.